Hello, everyone. Welcome to my Crypto 2020 virtual talk. I hope everyone is safe. So in this talk, I will present universally composable relaxed password authenticated key exchange. And this is joint work with Michelle Abdallah, Manuel Barbosa, Tatiana Bradley, Stanislav Yaretsky, and Jonathan Kass. And we also have two guest stars here. So this is Ada Lovelace and this is Charles Babbage replacing Alison Bob. So these were joined by my co-author Tatiana and Tatiana also contributed a lot to the slides in general. Okay, so let me first introduce the concept of password authenticated key exchange or PAID. So this is a two-party protocol and the goal is to establish a shared cryptographic key in the so-called password only setting, which means that the only information shared by the two parties in advance is a low entropy password. So as you can see here, Ada inputs a password, her password PW, and Charles enters his password PW prime. And at the end of the interaction, if their passwords match, then they will output the same key. And otherwise, if their passwords don't match, then they will output independent keys. So here's a very brief overview of uh, previous constructions of paid protocols. So there have been two major paradigms. The first one is to take the Hellman key exchange and then you somehow blind the protocol messages using the password. And this line of research started from the groundbreaking work by Bellowin at Merit in 1992 called Encrypted Key Exchange or EKE. And since then there, has, there have been many subsequent works uh, in this paradigm. And the most efficient PEG protocols fall into this category. But on the other hand, they require their security analysis requires some idealized model, such as the random oracle model. And another, another paradigm is to use encryption plus smooth projective hash function. And this usually allows a PEG protocol to be proven secure in the standard model. So you, you usually still need a common reference string but no random oracle is needed. But the cost is that they are usually less efficient. For, for a very long time, there has been really no adoption of PIC in practice. But very recently, from last year to this year, the IETF, the Inter Internet in Engineering Task Force, held two competitions on PIC. One on PIC, and one on an extension called asymmetric pipes. And this sparked much interest in the, in the practical aspects of PIC. And perhaps we will see PIC implementations used in, uh, in, the re in real life, uh, say on the internet, in, in some years. This work is about the security models of PIC. So again, for PIC security models, there are also two prominent paradigms. One is a game-based model, and the other is the universally composable or UC model. So UC is stronger than game-based in general because UC allows for arbitrary protocol composition. But in particular for PAIC, UC also has some additional advantages, such as modeling password reuse, which means that um, a user can use the same password for multiple accounts. And this is simply not covered by the game-based definition. So for these reasons, UC has been viewed as a gold standard for PAIC security analysis. And indeed, since UC allows for arbitrary protocol composition, there are some previous results showing that a UC PAIC can be composed to get some extensions, such as a symmetric PAIC and an even stronger variant called strong asymmetric PAIC. Unfortunately, the most efficient PIC protocols are proven secure in the game-based setting only and not in the UC setting. But on the other hand, there has also been no explicit attack shown for any of them. So a very natural question is, is there really a gap between these efficient PIC protocols and the UC PIC model? And this is, this is indeed the motivation of our work and our work is exactly to fill this gap. 
So we propose two relaxations of the standard peg functionality. One is called uh, lazy extraction peg or LE peg, and this is the main one we use. And the other is a slightly stronger variant called relaxed UC peg or R peg. And then we show that all of these uh, aspect two, TB peak, S peak, and C peak. So all of these efficient uh, peak protocols, which were proven secure in the game based setting only previously, all of these actually realize UC lazy extraction peak in the random oracle model. So in other words, we show that they are actually UC secure as long as you are willing to slightly relax the UC functionality itself. And third, we show that standard T confirmation converts a, a lazy extraction peg to the stronger relaxed peg. And finally, we also do a sanity check that any UC relaxed peg is game based secure with the so-called perfect forward secrecy property. So even if the PAIC functionality is relaxed, it still implies the basic game-based security. So our key observation is as this. Um, in, an, in an active attack, the standard UC PAIC functionality requires the simulator to extract the password, to extract the adversary's password before the session completes. So that is before the attacked party outputs a key. So if we take a look at the standard UC peg functionality, so here this picture is directly copied and pasted from the ori original paper, which, which proposed the standard UC peg functionality. So as you can see here, the test password query corresponds to the simulator extracting the password, the adversary's password. And this query will be ignored by the functionality unless the protocol session is fresh. And it is fresh only before the session completes. So again, this standard UC peg functionality requires that the extraction of the password must happen before the session completes. So now we can uh, take an example and see why this aspect two protocol does not seem to realize the standard uh, peg functionality. So this is a one round protocol and the only messages sent during a session are the group elements X and Y. And if you, if you look at how X and Y are computed, they are Peterson commitments of the password, which means that the password is information theoretically hidden and there's simply no hope to extract the password during the online session. However, after those online messages X and Y are sent, if the adversary wants to get, say, Ada's key, then it needs to make a random oracle query at the end, which can be seen by the simulator. So maybe the simulator can extract the password after the online session completes. So to summarize, the simulator cannot extract the password during an online session. And that is why aspect two doesn't seem to realize the standard UC peg uh, functionality. But there's still some hope that the password can be extracted afterward. And indeed, this is exactly the idea of our relaxation of the UC peg functionality. That is, to allow the post-execution password extraction. So even after all protocol messages are sent and the honest party already computes its key, the simulator can still extract the password by observing the adversary's local computation, such as the random oracle queries. And as in the standard UC peg functionality, we require that for a session, only a single password can be tested. But the difference is the, the difference with the standard functionality is that here the password test can be done either during the session or after the session com completes. And what will happen uh, in a late password test? So we recall that we have two relaxations. 
So in this lazy extraction pike functionality, the ideal adversary learns a session key, which is real if the late password test is real. Uh, sorry, if the late password test is correct, and otherwise it is random. So in the stronger uh, relaxed pike functionality, the ideal adversary only learns whether the late password test is correct or not. As you can see, relaxed pike is indeed stronger because the adversary learns less information. So here's the, the details of our relaxations of the UCPEG functionality. So first of all, if the adversary wants to do a late password test, then it needs to register, register the late password test during the session. And secondly, in the late test, uh, in the late test password query, which reflects the post-execution password extra extraction, the ideal adversary may learn a key here, as in lazy extraction pipe, or learn a bit whether the late password test is correct or not, as in relaxed pipe. So now we can uh, look a little bit closer on how exactly the simulator can extract the password post execution in, say, aspect two. So we prove that. Aspect two, UC realizes the lazy extraction pipe functionality in the random oracle model under the gap defect home assumption. Um, and we stress that the reduction here is tight. So now let's say that Charles is the adversary and Ada needs to be simulated. So first of all, there are two random group elements in the common reference string. M and N. And because it is the simulator who sets the CRS, of course, the simulator can know the discrete log of M and N. And secondly, um, the simulator also needs to simulate the protocol message of Ada, which is the group element X. So recall that X is the Peterson commitment of Ada's password. So at this point, the simulator doesn't know Ada's password. And and this X is a random group element. So what the simulator will do is to just sample group element uniformly. And again, the simulator knows the discrete log of X. So now the simulator has three trapdoors, the discrete logs of M, N, and X. If the adversary wants to learn the uh, the session key of Ada, then it needs to make a random oracle query here, because this is how Ada's uh, Ada's session key is computed. So now, in particular, the input of the random oracle contains the password and also a group element here and here. So aspect two is designed in such a way that there's a relation between these two, the password and the group element, such that a correct RO query always, uh, in a correct RO query, these two always satisfy such a relation. And this relation can be checked given all these three trapdoors. So what does this mean? This means that when Charles, when this adversary queries the random oracle, the simulator can check if the query is correct. That, that is if the query corresponds to a password test. And if this is the case, then the simulator can extract the password guess. So why does it only realize the, uh, the lazy extraction pack functionality? So this is because the simulator, uh, after extracting the uh, Ada's password, it needs to pro uh, it really needs to learn the key from the functionality in order to program the random oracle. So why 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 do we need gap DP Hellman here? Recall that the lazy extraction pack functionality only allows a single password test per session. So this means that if Charles makes two random, random oracle queries, 
the same session and both of them are correct, then the simulator would get stuck because it doesn't know which password should be sent to the, to the functionality. But we can show that this essentially means that the adversary channels solves computational Diffie Hellman on the, uh, on the CRS group elements M and N. So in the reduction to CDH, the reduction doesn't know the chapters for M and N. And to get around, it needs a DDH, a decisional Diffie Hellman oracle. And that is why a gap, uh, why the gap Diffie Hellman assumption is needed. Okay, our second result is about adding explicit mutual authentication. Recall that in a normal pack, in a pack with the so-called implicit authentication, if the two parties' passwords don't match, then they will output independent keys. But here, the difference is that uh, if the passwords don't match, then the parties will just abort. So we show the results that EOC lazy extraction pack plus standard key confirmation use a stronger UC relax pack with explicit authentication. So how is the key confirmation done? So you just use the lazy extraction pack output, uh, small k here, and you derive an authenticator called tau here, and then you exchange the authenticator. And after you receive the authentic authenticator from the counterparty, you check if it is correct. And if it is not correct, then you abort. Okay. So now let's see on a very high level why, uh, why this theorem holds. So this is because um, if the adversary doesn't do a, test, uh, do a password test on the correct password, then the adversary cannot simply cannot come up with a correct authenticator. And since the lazy extraction pack key, since this key is hidden, the, the, adverse, uh, the, the honest party will just abort. In other words, in other words if, the, if the honest party doesn't abort, then the adversary must do a correct password guess, uh, yes, which allows the simulator to extract the password. And, and unlike aspect two, here the simulator doesn't really need a key to program the random oracle. Learning whether the password test is correct or not is sufficient for computing the final session key. So we get a uh, we get an R pack, which is slightly stronger than LE pack. And there are, there are some subtleties here which prevents this to realize the standard pack, uh, standard pack functionality. So roughly speaking, this is because the adversary can make a late, late password test even after a session abort. Furthermore, we also do a sanity check here involving a game-based uh, game pack security notion and um, the property of perfect perfect forward secrecy or PFS. So recall that perfect forward secrecy means that even after a party corruption, all previous sessions are still secure. So we show that you see relaxed pack implies game based both game based security and PFS. And the proof of this fact is very similar to the previous results that the standard UCPEG functionality has this property. And we also show that the weaker UC lazy extraction pack, um, it also implies game-based uh, pack security and a weaker form of PFS. We measure some related work here. There has been some previous work modeling this post-execution extraction nature in UC. First, in the context of another primitive called oblivious pseudorandom function, and then in a symmetric pack. 
And here's the concurrent work by Shoup, which shows that SP2 with key confirmation actually realizes a functionality which is essentially equivalent to our relax pick. And the difference is that our analysis is done modularly. So first, we analyze the plane aspect tool as a lazy extraction plate. And then we add key confirmation to obtain the stronger, the relaxed plate. And we also analyzed some other efficient plate protocols. But on the other hand, Shoup's analysis is based on a slightly weaker assumption than ours. And finally, there is the very recent result which shows that an encrypted key exchange, the first fake protocol ever proposed, already realizes the standard UC fake functionality when the encryption scheme is some specific one. But regarding the computational costs of their protocol and ours, there, there is some trade-off in the comparison. And at this moment, it is not completely clear which one is more efficient when implemented. And also, their security reduction is not as tight as ours. So in conclusion, we show that practical PIC protocols are actually UC secure, as long as we slightly relax uh, the standard UC PIC, uh, PIC functionality to lazy extraction PIC. And secondly, adding key confirmation has two effects. The first one is it allows explicit authentication. And the second is it upgrades lazy extraction pack to the slightly stronger relax pack. And finally, we show that every UC pack is actually game-based secure with perfect forward secrecy. Yeah, there are many interesting open questions and here I only want to mention one of them. And that is, is lazy extraction pack we propose really weaker than the standard UC page. And if that is the case, then in what cases or in what sense are they weaker? Okay, so this is the end of the talk. Um, our paper is on ePrint. You can check it out if you are interested. Thank you very much.